That's right, guys. It was another week and another devastating pair of injuries for the Kansas City Chiefs. And also, breaking-ish news, it looks like the Cleveland Browns have swiped Bailey Zappi off of the practice squad as well. So just to have one more thing to look forward to, the Kansas City Chiefs will have to find another quarterback to have as their emergency guy if that happens to be what they decide to do with that practice squad spot. Now, a little bit of breaking news on Jalen Watson as well. He elect, he had to have surgery on that ankle tibia fibula type region, so it looks like he has done not just for a little long while, but for a long, long while, and the speculation is that his season might be done regardless of how far the Kansas City Chiefs go in the playoffs. Now, <clears throat> the next bit of news in this video that's not quite so breaking, but did happen at a press conference, I believe it was yesterday, was that Andy Reid said that Juju Smith-Schuster will miss the Raiders game. And I wanted to add a little bit of context on these two bits of the news, Juju Smith-Schuster uh, missing the Raiders game and Jalen Watson going down long term. And let's start with Juju Smith-Schuster. Look, if Juju Smith-Schuster was in shape to try to go for the 49ers game, which was the case, he was going to, he stepped on the field. According to sources, he, he played four snaps for the Kansas City Chiefs. I did not notice that many. Um, he was on the field for that game, testing his hamstring to see if he could go. Turned out he could not. If he was able to test the hamstring last Sunday, he would be able to test the hamstring against the Raiders as well. Meaning, what this means to me, what this says to me, what I think is going on here with Andy Reid taking to the press so early in the week and saying Juju's not going to be available is that this is Andy Reid telling his team it's time to nut up or shut up. You beat the 49ers without Juju Smith-Schuster on the field, for all intents and purposes. You can beat the Raiders without Juju Smith-Schuster as well. Now, that might be misleading because the Raiders are just one game worse than are the San Francisco 49ers. Three wins versus two wins, but... What this is saying, there was a couple years ago where the Kansas City Chiefs played the Broncos in the final, I think it was the final or the penultimate game of the season, and the Chiefs were very good, and the Broncos were very not, and the Chiefs should have slept walked through that game. But what ended up happening is that the Kansas City Chiefs by snap count, kind of treated the game like a scrimmage, and it was a very competitive game. But you had to look at the snap counts to understand why it was so close. The Kansas City Chiefs did play their starters, but many of them played sparingly. Many of them played on and off throughout the game. And the, the message from Andy Reid must have been clear to the squad, win this game. You need to win this game and we're not going to risk our health to do it. It appears to me that might be what we are seeing with this situation from Juju Smith-Schuster already in week seven of this season. Now, this is not to say that Juju Smith-Schuster is not injured. Uh, I believe he is injured. It is just to insist that uh, a week of knowing he doesn't have to test that hamstring, he doesn't have to go through the motions in practice, he can just rest that hamstring will get him will get him through recovery quicker hamstrings are very very tricky things if you've ever pulled a hamstring you understand that it's not about rest it's about how it is that you step on the it's a, it's just a weird feeling in general so i can't imagine what it's like for a professional athlete now um this is all, of course, speculation based on the fact that I don't know if the Kansas City Chiefs are going to acquire another wide receiver. But I do think that they will have to call up someone from the practice squad. I don't think they're getting through this game just using 
four wide receivers. I think they're going to call someone up, and we'll talk a little bit later about how that's going to go about. But just for memory's sake, on the practice squad now, as far as wide receivers are concerned, Justin Ross, six foot four, two hundred and ten pounds, runs around a four six forty. Differing, he did not officially run a forty yard dash. Differing reports around his speed, etc. Nico Remigio, five nine, one eighty seven, ran a four five six forty yard dash. And Montrell Washington, five ten, one seventy, with a four four eight. 40-yard dash. Obviously, of this group, the wide receiver closest to what it is that Juju Smith-Schuster does on the field, what Juju Smith-Schuster presents on the field would be Justin Ross. He's a bigger, more physical guy, doesn't get a whole lot of separation. Juju doesn't get a whole lot of separation, just makes the catch. Will Justin Ross, if he is promoted to the active roster, end up being a guy that just makes the catch? We will maybe get back to the wide receiver situation a minute in a minute, but moving on to Jalen Watson, the Chiefs will have one roster spot opened up in order to promote a wide receiver or whatever it is they decide to do with that roster spot because Watson is likely to be on the IR. It is not clear that they will use that spot to flex the cornerback position on the roster. The cor- the Chiefs do have a number of defensive backs on the practice squad, and we will get there in a moment. But I don't know that they are going to use the the freed up space from Jalen Watson going on the IR in order to call up a defensive back. Why? Because the Kansas City Chiefs have a number of defensive backs on the roster already. It is not like they're going to be calling up Darius Rush to play cornerback number two they would be calling Darius Rush up to be the last cornerback on the roster. Now, here's the the funny part to me. Here's the interesting part to me. Here's the weird thing, in my opinion. In training camp, this team was all about Joshua Williams. Joshua Williams was getting the big push and expected by many to be the cornerback number two. But when Jalen Watson returned from that shoulder injury, Watson... Uh, Williams essentially disappeared and has played a total of 50 snaps on the season. A total of 50 defensive snaps on the season, which leads to a couple of questions. One, why was Joshua Williams favored early in camp? Why was it that the coaching staff wanted or thought or speculated that he would be that number two cornerback for the Kansas City Chiefs. And the number two question that this leads to for me is, are those reasons gone? Is Were those, were those thoughts proven wrong? Or did Jalen Watson return and simply outshine Joshua Williams? Which is to say, they thought Joshua Williams had improved his footwork, <clears throat> had improved his hand timing, They thought Joshua Williams had been able to work himself into a man cover corner. Those were their thoughts going into training camp. When Jalen Watson returned and ultimately became cornerback number two, was it because it turned out Joshua Williams could not cover man, did not have the footwork, his hands were still slow, or was it that Jalen Watson returned and was simply better than Joshua Williams? We can hope that it is simply that Jalen Watson returned and was better than Joshua Williams. Maybe that was the case. Hopefully that was the case. I think that Joshua Williams does have potential to be a number two cornerback in this league. I don't think he has the potential to be a number one. I think Jalen Watson has the potential to be a number one. The defensive backs on the practice squad for the Kansas City Chiefs right now. Nick Jones drafted just last year, six foot tall, 189 pounds with a 45140. Darius Rush signed off of waivers last season, reclaimed this season, six foot two, 198 pounds with a 436. 40 yard dash. Eric Scott, a veteran, six foot one, 197 pounds, 47140. That 47140, why he found himself on the waiver wire. Keith Taylor, Six foot two, 195 pounds, a 4'5'3", 40-yard dash, a, 
a true cornerback type veteran. Dion Bush, the most veteran of this group, though he is essentially a special teams ace, six foot tall, 200 pounds, 4'6", 40 yard dash. If you were looking at the names on this practice squad and who translates most convincingly to the role of Jalen Watson in a made for TV movie, it would be Jalen or Darius Rush. The size and the speed are there. Keith Taylor probably has a skill set most similar, but again, I do not think they will be promoting a defensive back from the uh, from the practice squad onto the active roster once Jalen Watson goes on to uh, the IR. Jalen Watson, by the way, tweeting out a broken heart emoji. Probably not great news, guys. But I think that the Kansas City Chiefs do have the personnel necessary to really... I think they're going to miss Jalen Watson. I don't think it is going to devastate the defense. So let's get back to the wide receivers because I think this is where it gets most interesting because I think that roster spot is going to be used on one of these guys. And here's the thing. They all have their selling points. Of these three, Montreal Washington has the most NFL experience. Montreal Washington has been around for a little while. Montreal Washington, maybe not the biggest guy, maybe not the most physical guy, but he's a fast guy. And at the NFL level, he has 692 return yards. Now, he only has 30 rushing yards and two receiving yards on four receptions. So I'm not making the case that he's some type of pro bowler, uh, but he does have experience on an NFL field. And that's not worth nothing. It's worth something, as to not use a double negative. But Nika Remigio offers, in my opinion, the most stickability here. I think that Nika Remigio finds himself as one of these guys that is a glue guy on the field, that is that has the opportunity to be a first down machine in the NFL. If he is able to work his way into the Andy Reid offense and be someone that can be counted on to be in the right place at the right time, I think he has the best chance of this group. And this is coming from a Justin Ross fan. I can't tell you how much I have supported Justin Ross on this channel, but Justin Ross, I think, has had opportunities and maybe hasn't done as much with them as I would have thought or hoped that he would. So, Of these names, I think that Nico Remigio. So here's okay, so here's the the big question. How long lasting will this Juju Smith Schuster hamstring issue be? Because you only have a limited amount of times that you can call one of these practice squad players up before you have to sign them to the roster in order to keep them. That affects your salary cap. That, I think, is the big reason why the Chiefs are avoiding this move as long as they can. You have, you're 6-0. and There's 11 games left in the regular season. That's a lot of time for one of these guys to have to be called up multiple times. The minute you call, I think it's, I think they have three shots elevations from the practice squad to the regular roster. You elevate them a fourth time, you have to give them an NFL contract, and that comes with a a hit to the salary cap for whatever that contract is worth. Now, don't quote me, but I think that's what it is. So it might be that until the Juju Smith-Schuster stuff gets figured out, until maybe there is a trade, well, there's only one more game before the trade deadline, right? Whatever the case, we might see these wide receivers go through a bit of the hot potato routine until it is that something is figured out. You call up Justin Ross one week, maybe you call up Nico Remigio the next, Montreal Washington the third, etc. This is a precarious position. Like I, I think that's obvious. I don't have to say that. You know that that is probably a little bit of dead space in your ears to hear, 
precarious position in connection with the Chiefs wide receiver position. But I don't I don't know how it gets better. Last year, you had the McCole Hardman acquirement on the horizon. Last year, at this time, you had little bits of hope for Rashi Rice. <clears throat> now, I do believe that there are bits of hope for Xavier Worthy, but he's a completely different type of receiver. If you're feeding Xavier Worthy 10 targets a game, somebody's going to be in trouble somewhere. Either Xavier Worthy for not catching it or Xavier Worthy for being injured from taking too many hits. Whatever the case is, I don't think you want to be targeting Xavier Worthy 10 times a game. Rashi Rice is the, the type of guy that is constructed for that level of play. <clears throat> so I really don't know where to go from here, but it is going to be interesting and it is the most it is the strangest to go back to the herm edwards days there were lots of roster moves back then and it was fun right because you thought well they're going to throw some spaghetti at the wall they'll see what sticks in fact i think herm edwards was even quoted as saying we're going to throw it against the wall talking about his quarterback position one of those seasons that's a fun place to be. It's not the most fun place to be. But here's the thing. If I had to go 8-8 eight and eight or 3, or I guess it'd be 8-9 and nine or 3-15, three and 3-14 three and 14 at this point, it, not for the Chiefs, but just in general, right? You're faced with that question as a fan. Would you rather watch an 8-9 and nine season or a 3-14 and, three se or a three and 14 season? Give me the 3-14 and 14 season because lots of wacky stuff's going to go on. You're going to see a lot of young players get opportunities. The Kansas City Chiefs are 6-0. and oh, And they might be in the situation where we're going to see a lot of young players get opportunities. So this is an absolutely wild time from that perspective. That is all I have for this video. If you like or appreciate what it is that I do here, hitting the like button really does help me out as it tells YouTube to share this video with other Kansas City Chiefs fans. And if you find yourself here by chance but not design, the Kansas City Chiefs are the only thing I talk about on the channel. So consider hitting the subscribe button in order to stick around for more Chiefs content in the future. And as always, I hope to have you back for the next one.